So back in the summer of 2022, we were trying to figure out sermon series that would kind of work in a virtual world. And Pastor Jen, who is the um, pastor at Reisterstown United Methodist Church, asked me to fill in one Sunday while she was on vacation during this series. Now, I haven't had any children's books in my house for about 35 years, so I had no idea what book to pick for this series. So she gave me several suggestions, and I picked God's Dream. And I knew I made the right choice when God, through the Holy Spirit, sent me several messages while I was preparing this message. He sent messages through song lyrics, TV shows, movies, and scripture. I watched Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dream Code. It's by Tim Rice and Andrew Lloyd Webber, and that's the song that Lambert sang for us, is at the end of that movie. I watched, um, I was, at the time I was doing a Bible study, and we were studying the book of Matthew, and we talked about the dreams that Joseph, the earthly father of Jesus, had, both in marrying Mary, and then keeping his young family safe as he took them to Egypt. I have a dream kept running through my mind and reminded me of Dr. Martin Luther King. He dreamed that all men would be treated equally and children would be judged by their character, not the color of their skin. I learned that Harriet Tubman had a dream that she would see the end of slavery before she died. She said, every great dream begins with a dreamer. Always remember, you have within you the strength, the patience, and the passion to reach for the stars to change the world. So how many of us have dreams, plans, hopes, wishes, dreams of no more COVID, that would be nice, no more masks, no more violence, dreams of going to baseball games and football games, dreams about what the future holds for us and maybe our children, even though we're facing difficulties. We dream and so does God. Archbishop Tutu tells the children that God dreams about people sharing and caring. God dreams that we reach out and hold one another's hands and play one another's games and laugh with one another's hearts. And God's dreams come true by sharing, loving, caring, holding, playing, laughing as easy as knowing we are family because we are all God's children. Tutu tells us not only that God dreams, but he also tells us how to make God's dreams come true. The children's book, God Dreams, puts things very simply for the audience it is intended for. But for us, the authors of God Dreams also wrote an adult version of a book. It's entitled, God Has a Dream, A Vision of Hope for Our Times. And that book helps us dig deeper to understand God's dreams and our role in seeing them come true. Even though it was written in 2004, the book is just as relevant today as it was 18 years ago. In the book, Tutu writes, I have a dream, God says. Please help me realize it. It is a dream of a world whose ugliness and squander and poverty, its war and hostility, its greed and harsh competitiveness, its alienation and disharmony are changed into their glorious counterparts, when there will be more laughter, joy, and peace, where there will be justice and goodness and compassion and love and caring and sharing, I have a dream that swords will be beaten into plowshares 
and spears into pruning hooks. That, my children, that my children will know that they are members of one family, the human family, God's family, my family, end quote. God's dream can be summed up in the second commandment of the New Testament, love your neighbor as yourself. This love, referred to agape love, is love without expectations, love given sacrificially and unconditionally. We are to love all people this way. Very easy to say, very hard to do. First, we need to recognize we are part of God's family, his children, brothers and sisters. Like brothers and sisters, we don't always get along. We argue, we hurt each other, we shut each other out, and we even make each other cry. God understands this, but he expects us to reconcile and to forgive. In the congregational response that is part of the baptismal liturgy, we say, with God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. <sighs> Living according to the example of Christ. That is a challenge, to say the least. Because to live according to the example of Christ is to love everyone. This is just not our congregation or our friends. It is love for those who anger us, who hurt us, who shut us out. Our scripture today reminds us that whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or a sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. He has given us this command, anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. And we can do this, but with God's help. We are not only God's children, we are also God's partners. Tutu writes, for we are his partners. We are the ones he has sent to free the oppressed, to feed the hungry, and to shelter the homeless. We will turn our sadness into resolve, our despair into determination. If you were in heaven now and would notice the tears in God's eyes, the tears streaming down God's face as God looked on us and saw the awful things that we, God's children, are doing to each other, God cries and cries. Those sentences hit me in my gut. The thought of God crying because of what we are doing for each other and to each other just really, really affected me. Violence erupts in a moment because of the way we treat each other over a long period of time. We sometimes become numb to violence, reports of murder, of those dying of disease or starving, we forget the dreams that resounded 59 years ago when Dr. King delivered his I Have a Dream speech on August 28, 1963. If we look at what has happened, there has been progress. Not as fast as we would like, but it is happening. There is good all around us, but it's not usually pointed out. We have to look for it. And peace takes a long time to come because peace is built on trust. And trust, once lost, takes a long time to regain. So why don't we do what God asks of us? Sometimes it's out of selfishness, but most of the time it's out of fear. Fear of the unknown. Fear of stepping out in faith. Fear of rejection, fear of making a mistake, or making things worse. And now fear of getting sick. John reminds us there is no fear in love. Perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment, 
The one who fears is not made perfect in love. The one who fears does not trust God. The psalmist reminds us, the Lord is with me, I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? The Lord is with me, he is my helper. In the last part of his book, Tutu really challenged me. He reminds us that we don't know when the world will fully be transformed by God's love. Many wonder when this transformation will occur, he writes. It is occurring all around us if we have eyes to see with the heart and ears to hear God's voice. We are the ones who are making it happen. We often wish we could rush this transformation, but we cannot. It is happening on God's schedule, not ours. It is happening, as St. Paul puts it, in the fullness of time, end quote. So Genesis chapter 39, verse 23 tells us that the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. Joseph had faith that things would turn out all right, but it took years. Not only took years, but he suffered a lot. He was sold by his brothers, put into slavery, interpreted dreams, he really, really did not know what was going to happen to him. And both Mary and Joseph trusted the Lord in the messages he sent them in dreams. When the Lord told Joseph to take his young family and go to Egypt, he did that. But he had to wait two years before he could return home. And in his speech, Dr. King says, I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted, every hill and mountain shall be made low, the rough places will be made plain, and the crooked places will be made straight, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh see it together. This is our hope. This is the faith that I go back to the south with. With this faith, we will be able to hew out of the mountain of despair a stone of hope. With this faith, we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. With this faith, we will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together, to go to jail together, to stand up for freedom together, knowing that we will be free one day." End quote. King had a faith that God was with him and things would be okay one day. Harriet Tubman, one of the captains of the Underground Railroad, helped transfer over 300 slaves to the North. She started her work in 1850 and dreamed that she would see the end of slavery before she died. She had to wait 15 years before her dream came true. Did you know she was a Methodist? She had an undying faith that God would protect her. She writes, it isn't me, it was the Lord. I always told him, I trust you. I don't know where to go or what to do, but I expect you to lead me, and he always did. God is with us. It is our faith that upholds us as we continue to do good works. It is our faith and our trust in God that makes God's dreams come true in the fullness of time. We can't stop, but we also cannot wait and not start. We are the ones who spread God's love to others. Matthew chapter five reminds, 25, excuse me, reminds us that whatever you do of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Brothers and sisters of mine, brothers and sisters of Christ, not biological brothers and sisters, but all God's children. And when we show love, God's love to others, Tutu tells us, you might see the smile that was breaking over God's face like sunshine through the rain, almost like a rainbow. You would see God smiling because God was looking on you and noting how deeply concerned you are 
and the smile might break into a laugh as God says, you have vindicated me. I had, my, I had been asking myself, whatever got into me to create this lot? And when I see you, yes, you, God says, you are be beginning to wipe the tears from my eyes because you care. Because you care and you have come to learn that you are not your brother's brother or your sister's keeper. You are your brother's brother and your sister's sister. And God says, I have no one except you. Thank you for vindicating me. We say to ourselves, how can I make a difference? And God replies, it's only through you and there will be a difference. It starts with a smile, a handshake, sitting down and listening. All of these acts are acts of love. In one of his sermons, a Methodist minister, Kenneth Sawyer, <clears throat> tells this story. A wealthy woman visited Mother Teresa in Calcutta and offered to write a check to, the, to support the work of the Sisters of Charity. Mother Teresa declined. I won't take your money. The woman insisted, reminding Mother Teresa that she had tons of money to donate. But Mother Teresa said, no money. Exasperated, the woman stammered, well, what can I do? Mother Teresa said, come and see. She led the woman by the hand into a horrible part of town, found a desperately dirty, hungry child, and asked the woman to take care of him. So the woman took a cloth and a water basin and bathed the child. Then she spooned cereal into the child's mouth. Later, the woman said that this changed her life. She became part of something money could not buy, fix, or replace. God's agape love is personal and tangible. It must be lived to be experienced. Now, I will admit to you, I don't think I could have done that. I'm not one that feels comfortable in those types of situations. So I've had to figure out what works for me. What can I do to make a difference. So a couple friends and I send birthday cards to the elderly people in our congregation. It doesn't take much time. Put an address on it, write a little note, put a stamp on it, put it in the mail. I won't tell you how many comments I get from those people that get those cards, how grateful they are that somebody remembered them. It didn't take any effort at all on my part. Maybe you could write a note to a nurse. They're still challenged in their work life. Just let them know that you appreciate them. They're always looking for people that are willing to record books, reading a book. There are organizations looking for people, and they support people that have trouble reading themselves. Maybe you can find out how to help the youth and the young adults in your community. Maybe you can write a note to a teacher. School's getting ready to start. Let them know how much you appreciate them and how much you're willing to pray for them. Little things can add up. So since COVID, I watch a lot of TV. I watch a lot of TV anyway, I'll admit that. I'm sorry. But one of the things I like, I like British TV, and I like PBS's masterpiece, the show Grant Chester. And if you're not familiar with it, it's about this Anglican priest named Will Davenport. And Will helps the local detective solve murders. The episode that struck me was set in 1957 and dealt with mental illness and the use of hallucinogenics as a treatment for that mental illness. It was a pretty dark episode, but at the end, Will is giving a sermon and he ends that sermon by saying, it's easy to wonder, where is God? But even when we can't perceive him, 
Never doubt he is there. He is there constantly in every act of love, kindness, forgiveness. And it's only with God's love that we will be able to make this modern age a world not of horrors, but of wonders. Will Davenport, Dr. King, and Scripture remind us that God's love in us and through us, that our world will be filled with love and brotherhood. And Tutu puts it this way, each of us carries a piece of God's heart within us. And when we love one another, the pieces of God's heart are made whole. Whether we are in England in 1957, Washington, D.C. in 1963, or Cockeysville in 2022, the Bible gives us this instruction. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. If we do these two things, God's dreams will come true. Please remain seated as we sing the gift of love. 